I'm confused as to how one could even suggest that Jesus has returned from 2,000 years ago. <laughs> and I've only found out now through watching a TV show. And even an inaccurate one at that. <laughs> how is this possible? Mm -hmm. The Bible says to watch for such people proclaiming that they are Jesus. For example, in Matthew 24, Mark 13 and Luke 21. Mm. Since the Bible being of truth states that everyone would see you and not everyone has seen your return, your claims of being Jesus must be false. Is this not so? Right. Well, this one is a little bit more polite <laughs> than many of the other ones I get from, uh, from people of a Christian religious faith. Mm -hmm. and, and I feel quite inclined to answer it. The reality is that I am saying that I am Jesus. The reality also is that I didn't come in the manner the Bible describes. So there is obviously a conundrum for many Christians. You know, they see my claims, and offers often a false record of my claims on television. Uh, and my suggestion to people is to actually listen to my claims from my mouth instead of from the mouth of television reporters who often get it quite wrong. But even so, um, I am claiming to be Jesus and the Bible does say that I'd come a certain way and I haven't come the way the Bible explains. So uh, there is a decision that most Christians need to make and that is, do I believe the Bible is the infallible word of God on this matter or do I start analysing the person who says he's Jesus and see what he turns out to be? What mm -hmm. do I do? Now, most Christians choose to believe that the Bible is the infallible word of God on the matter and therefore discount any claim that I might make. Now, my suggestion is that's a very logical thing to do. Well, firstly... The illogical? Illogical, illogical yeah. yeah, it's illogical. The reason why it's illogical is because the Bible isn't the infallible word of God for a start. I've proven that through logic. And if anybody listens to my logic about the Bible being the word of God that's infallible, they can see that it's impossible for any book on this earth to contain God's word. So... You know, God's word, it's impossible for something this thick to even define the human body, let alone God's universe. So it's physically impossible for a book, a limited book, to describe everything about God and God's word and be God's word. And any person who believes that a physical book is God's word really needs to look carefully at their own illogical reasoning ability, because it's very illogical belief. That being said, the, the real question then becomes, well, um, how do I determine whether this man who's claiming to be Jesus is actually Jesus? And that is a very good question that, that does need to be answered, I feel. Now, according to the Bible itself, it says that in John chapter 1, verse 14, it says, the word became flesh, implying that I was the word, Jesus, and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, according to that, I, Jesus, I, am the living word of God. Now, if that is actually the case, then anything I say would supersede the Bible anyway. Now, that would mean that anything that's contained in the Bible when their Jesus comes, when the people who believe the Bible, their Jesus comes, that Jesus would supersede anything that the Bible said anyway. Mm -hmm. So how would you determine whether that Jesus was actually the Jesus that you're waiting for? And the only way to really determine who is Jesus is by looking at the fruitage of the person who's Jesus, by looking at what he's talking about, practising perhaps for a, for a short period of time or a long period of time, depending on what you want, and what he's speaking of, trying to understand it, trying to grasp it, seeing whether it always is in harmony with love and truth, and that is the only real way that you're going to determine who Jesus really is. Now, until I get into the condition where I can do the works of my Father, in other words, where God can work his way through me by the condition that I've obtained, again, through this growing in love, until that point in time, there's going to be no evidence or proof physically um, that a person, you know, miraculous, let's call it miraculous evidence, that I am Jesus. Mm -hmm. So the only way to tell is going to be by a person listening to what I've got to say and actually trying to put it into practice and understand it and to determine through their own interactions with God as to who I am. That's the only reason, that's the only way they're going to do it at this point in time. Now in the future, that may change. Mm -hmm. In the future, and once I become at one with God, and I do hope to become at one with God, it's not a given certainty 
just like it wasn't a certainty in the first century. I aspired to do it in the first century and I discovered the way, which I now know, and I did it with a lot of help from God and a lot of spirits to become at one with God in the first century. And in this century, I hope to have the same. You know, There is also a lot of opposition, which I've had to endure in this century to become at one with God. And so you know, it may be some time before I become at one with God. I don't know when it will be, and God hasn't told me when it will be, mm. and I, no spirit has told me when it will be, and I don't believe they can know either when it will be. So all I must do is continue to progress as I have defined and described in the manner in which I've discovered to deter and, to, and to prove whether it works or not. That's all I can do. Mm. And I may not be successful because it's the first time that this experiment has taken place, the experiment of an imperfect man attempting to become at one with God while on earth. This is the first time this experiment has been done uh, in, a, in a sense that I've done it anyway. Mm. And so I may not be successful, I do not know. However, I hope to be. And once I am successful, I also hope to then connect with God in such a way that God can work through me and then give people the evidence that they feel they need. My suggestion, though, is to not wait until that time because it might be many years hence from now where, where before I become one with God. My suggestion to people is put into practice the things that they're learning, you know, that I, that I am teaching. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of teachings that I've given. Analyse them and put them into practice and, and be, critically analyse them, but don't judgmentally analyse them. Mm -hmm. Because if you judgmentally analyse them, you're already going against one of the laws of love. My suggestion is to critically analyse them mm. with logic mm. to see whether they are workable or not. If you don't believe they're workable, then don't do it. If you believe they are workable, then attempt to practice it and see what the outcome is. But, but I can assure everyone that, that just because I'm saying I'm Jesus and just because the Bible says that I would come in a different way, it doesn't mean that automatically that I'm not Jesus and I'm a liar. Mm -hmm. You know, this is not an automatic truth and it's illogical to believe such a thing. So my suggestion to most people who believe these things is that all it proves when a person says to me, the Bible says this and the Bible is all truthful and you say that and you're different to what the Bible says so you must be a liar, any person that says that to me proves nothing to me. All they prove, or maybe not nothing, they prove one thing. Mm -hmm. They prove that they are deeply committed to the Bible being God's word and that they are totally unable to accept anything other than the Bible as being God's word. That's all they prove. Mm. They prove that they are deep believers in the Bible being God's word. I am not a believer in the Bible being God's word. I've had the personal benefit of having my life described in the Bible. And what it describes of my life isn't my life. So I know it's not God's word. If it was God's word, it would be an accurate reflection of what happened in my life. And it's not. Like, and I know it's not, even though you might believe it is. I know it's not because I lived it, that life. Yeah. So, so I have the added advantage to most people of seeing how the Bible isn't God's word in that my life is reflected in it and therefore, and I know it to be false because it's not an accurate record of my life. I've also had, and you have had, the added benefit of talking to many of our brothers and sisters in the spirit world over 2,000 of years of all of the other things that the Bible purports to be true yeah. in all of the different books of the Bible, all the prophets of old and the writers of the Bible, Moses and Elijah, Elijah and, and you know, Solomon and all these other writers in the Bible. We've had the benefit of talking to them and we've been able to find out which bits they wrote, which bits they didn't what bits are true, what bits are true about their life and so forth. And we can tell you that there is literally hundreds and hundreds of things, thousands of things, in fact, in the Bible that are definitely not true with regard to the record of their life either. Now, each person on earth find, might find that difficult to believe. But when you pass into the spirit world, you have the same benefits that I had, and that is you have the benefits of calling to you every single person who you've ever read about in the Bible and asking them, did you actually say that? <laughs> did you actually do that? Yeah. And then you will find when you, when you actually make this investigation, you will find the reality is they didn't say a lot of it and they didn't do a lot of it and they did many other things besides that are not mentioned in the Bible. And then you will realise, wow, what I believe to be the Bible was just words of men written by men 
who believed themselves to be in various conditions of love and faith and who often weren't in the condition they, they thought they were, who wrote these words because they felt impelled to write them. And it was all collected into one mass by priests who wanted to control people and who then embellished the word in order to make that control possible. Mm. And when you see the history of the Bible, you will not discount it as all bad, but you will not accept it as the word of God once you understand these particular things that you can investigate. So what I suggest to every Christian who believes the Bible is God's word and that they cannot, and if they cannot believe, give up this belief now on earth, this is what I suggest to you. When you die and pass into the spirit world and find that everything is not as you imagined it to be, then ask these people who wrote these words to come to you and explain what they actually said. That's what I suggest to you. And when you have these interactions with these people, and these people will be willing to have these interactions with you, then listen to them and listen to the evidence and proof that they provide. And once you do, you will realise that this book, although it claims to be the full and complete and only word of God, it is not. And the Koran, just as it claims a very similar thing, is not. And all the other holy books on this planet are not. The only way for God to write a book on the earth is to write all of his laws in your heart. You can become the living word of God just like I became the living word of God in the first century once you become at one with God. That is your potential. Now, my suggestion is if you're not willing to do that before you pass, at least attempt to do that afterwards. But do it through investigation. Don't automatically accept everything it says because if you do, you will be severely disappointed in your future. Mm.